We continue today with chapter 31, The Self-Accused. Only the self-accused condemn. As you prepare to make a choice that will result in different outcomes, there is first one thing that must be overlearned. It must become a habit of response so typical of everything you do that it becomes your first response to all temptation and to every situation that occurs. Learn this and learn it well, for it is here delay of happiness is shortened by a span of time you cannot realize. You never hate your brother for his sins, but only for your own. Whatever form his sins appear to take, it but obscures the fact that you believe them to be yours, and therefore meriting a, quote, just attack. Why should his sins be sins if you did not believe they could not be forgiven in you? Why are they real in him if you did not believe that they are your reality? And why do you attack them everywhere except you hate yourself? Are you a sin? You answer yes whenever you attack, for by attack you assert that you are guilty and must give as you deserve. And what can you deserve but what you are? If you did not believe that you deserved attack, it never would occur to you to give attack to anyone at all. Why should you? What would be the gain to you? What could the outcome be that you would want? And how could murder bring you benefit? Sins are in bodies. They are not perceived in minds. They are not seen as purposes, but actions. Bodies act, and minds do not. And therefore must the body be at fault for what it does. It is not seen to be a passive thing, obeying your commands and doing nothing of itself at all. If you are sin, you are a body, for the mind acts not and purpose must be in the body, not in the mind. The body must act on its own and motivate itself. If you are sin, you lock the mind within the body and you give its purpose to its prison house, which acts instead of it. A jailer does not follow orders, but enforces orders on the prisoner. Yet is the body prisoner and not the mind. The body thinks no thoughts, it has no power to learn, to pardon, nor enslave. It gives no orders that the mind needs serve, nor sets conditions that it must obey. It holds in prison but the willing mind that would abide in it. It sickens at the bidding of the mind that would become its prisoner. And it grows old and dies because that mind is sick within itself. Learning is all that causes change, and so the body, where no learning can occur, would never change unless the mind preferred the body change in its appearances to suit the purpose given by the mind. For the mind can learn, and there is all change made. The mind that thinks it is a sin has but one purpose that the body be the source of sin, to keep it in the prison house it chose, and guards and holds itself at bay. A sleeping prisoner to the snarling dogs of hate and evil, sickness and attack, of pain and age, of grief and suffering. Here are the thoughts of sacrifice pre preserved, for here guilt rules, and orders that the world be like itself, a place where nothing can find mercy, nor survive the ravages of fear except in murder and in death. For here are you made sin, and sin cannot abide, the joyous and the free, for they are enemies which sin must kill. In death is sin preserved, and those who think that they are sin must die for what they think they are. Let us be glad that you will see what you believe, and that it has been given you to change what you believe. The body will but follow, 
It can never lead you where you would not be. It does not guard your sleep, nor interfere with your awakening. Release your body from imprisonment, and you will see no one as prisoner to what you have escaped. You will not want to hold in guilt your chosen enemies, nor keep in chains to the illusion of a changing love the ones you think are friends. The innocent release in gratitude for their release, and what they see upholds their freedom from imprisonment and death. Open your mind to change, and there will be no ancient penalty exacted from your brother or yourself. For God has said there is no sacrifice that can be asked. There is no sacrifice that can be made. And from the workbook, lesson 244, I am in danger nowhere in the world. Your son is safe wherever he may be, for you are there with him. He need but call upon your name, and he will recollect his safety and your love, for they are one. How can he fear or doubt or fail to know he cannot suffer, be endangered, or experience unhappiness when he belongs to you, beloved and loving, in the safety of your fatherly embrace? And there we are in truth. No storms can come into the hallowed haven of our home. In God we are secure. For what can come to threaten God himself, or make afraid what will forever be a part of him? Amen.